Tonight, we look at how members of Congress are reaching across the aisle to find common ground to try to work together to address big issues. Joining us this evening, California Democratic Congressman Scott Peters and Michigan Republican Congressman Bill Heisegger. Congressman, thanks for being here. I want to play this soundbite from uh, President Biden. Take a listen. My friends talk about the big spend of Biden. Well, guess what? I made a promise I'll never raise federal tax on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. I kept my promise. And unlike the last president, in my first two years in office, even with all we've done, I'm the first one to cut the federal debt by $1,700,000,000,000. Well, not really. He didn't cut the federal debt. Uh, the debt actually went up in the Biden administration, $3.5 trillion. It's at over $31 trillion now. I think he's talking there about the national deficit between 2020 and 2022. Uh, and that number, $1.7 trillion, a lot of it, most of it, is due to expiring pandemic uh, spending. You all are working across the aisle on financial matters. Tell me how Congress gets their head around this from both sides of the aisle, uh, dealing with a budget like we have. Congressman Heisinger, first to you. All right. Well, uh, and I'm glad you're having Scott and I on, and because and, uh, this is a very, very important conversation. That we need to have. And frankly, starting the conversation or maybe restarting the conversation has been a big challenge. Obviously, we have been spending a lot of money over the last number of years uh, going into COVID, coming out of COVID. Um, but, you know, we, we've got to find some common ground here. And I've got some constituents, to be honest, that don't think we ought to be having that conversation. I, I get told on occasion, you know, you shouldn't even be talking to these people, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I always say to them, look, if we're not having the conversation, how are we supposed to figure out whether we agree on 5 percent, 15 percent or 50 percent? And there are some things that we know that are looming here. Uh, for example, uh, in 2033, there's going to be a cut to Social Security. If you look at the debt uh, that we've accumulated, interest on the debt uh, is uh, soon to eclipse defense spending and not shortly after that could uh, eclipse uh, our domestic programs. It means less money for VA and you know, hospitals and all kinds of things. So um, it, it is a conversation we have to have. Congressman Peters, uh, what, what about that? We're facing another fiscal cliff come yeah. September. Um, how can you guys work together to avoid that? Well, I think we have to. I mean, think about uh, Bill and I realize that this has been an issue that's been developed over time. It's not just a Democratic or Republican issue. Both parties have been voting for funding our uh, ongoing expenses with debt. Uh, and President Trump bears his share as well. I mean, his the um, the, the deficit, he set a record for the most debt added in a single four-year presidential term before this. So we're, we're sort of getting past that um, that blame and, and, and looking at each other and figuring out how do we get this country on a sustainable fiscal path. So the bipartisan fiscal forum has recommended a commission that would talk this through because we're going to get through this uh, very difficult uh, uh, end of September um, hurdle like we always do. But we won't, I, I'm very confident, without something like a commission, we won't have dealt with the long term structural uh, challenges facing us. The fact that we're spending more, we're going to be spending in four years more money on interest than defense. We already spend more money on. Um, on interest than our children. And as some as Democrats would like to see something like the child tax credit, uh, I don't want that money going to paying interest. I want our tax money to be deployed for our citizens. And we got to get out of this very bad habit. Yeah. I, I, listen, I've been covering Washington for a long time. Uh, there hasn't been a real hunger for dealing with the debt. Um, we both parties, to your point, Congressman Peters, have been spending a ton. Now, we dealt with a pandemic and both administrations dealt with that. But the last time the debt, the national debt ever decreased was 1957. Most times cuts in Washington deal with slowing increases, uh, Congressman mm -hmm. Heisinger. So, I mean, there's got to be a different mindset up there completely. Uh, yeah. Congress has been at this for a long time. Well, unfortunately, we have some folks that don't see it as a problem. Uh, they think as long as we can keep ahead and keep up on those interest payments, it doesn't really matter what we spend. Uh, and to me, that's just wrongheaded. I'm a small business person, three uh, generations. My family's been involved in, in construction here in Michigan. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm no captain of industry, but I know how to read a P&L sheet. And, 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 and it's math, Brett. At the end of the day, this is simply math, and the math isn't adding up for future generations. 
you're right. Um, this has been going on for a very long time and we have to acknowledge the problem and we then have to do something about that. And that's what this, uh, the Bipartisan Fiscal Forum is trying to do. Bipartisan Fiscal Forum, and I applaud you for finding, trying to find common ground. Um, but, you know, Congress has been at this for a long time. There's structures and committees. Um, but you have to create something else to try to get around what, what has been years and years uh, of spending. I'm wondering, you know, we went through Simpson Bowles, Congressman Peters. That was a, an idea that we could everybody could get their head around, but it never got across the finish line. Do you guys see some big thing that's going to change the dynamic? The big thing is the debt is way bigger. I mean, the problem is that uh, the, the problem that they looked at back then was a smaller problem. It's just gotten bigger. And the, and the issue is when, you know, we're sitting across the table and, you know, I'm, I'm saying, uh, can I have cake for dinner? And, and sure, if I can have cake for dinner, we'll do it too. And, and both parties have been complicit in not really paying attention to the long-term effect of borrowing to pay our ongoing expenses. So um, we can't draw any red lines. We have to put people together in a room. We're not going to fix it in one year. Uh, but together, and only in a bipartisan way can we do this, we need to get a, we need to get a hold of this before we really face dire consequences. And Brett, do you have something on? I think not only is it elected officials and the structure that surrounds our government operations that need to realize this, but citizens. Uh, citizens have to understand what this means, and they have to have their voice be heard, whether it's at the state level or at the federal level. Uh, they've got to make sure that those of us that do end up on the ballot uh, have an understanding that they aren't happy with the situation. That will also motivate some folks. All right, so both of you really quickly to wrap up. Uh, you know, when you hear somebody say it's it's just all partisanship up, up on Capitol Hill and, and you can't really get anything done, um, what do you say, Congressman Peters and Congressman Heisinger? Well, Bill and I actually... Um, I think we see that we're problem solvers. You can't solve any big problem in Congress without Democrats and Republicans. You basically need 60 votes in the Senate for anything. So, um, you know, what you see is something you don't always see on TV with the rock throwers and the, the, um, the you know, the the, the uh, pontificators. As you got two two people here, uh, leading a group of uh, a significant group to really deal with this problem in a bipartisan way. That's the way it should be done. And um, I don't think it will be easy, but I think it's the only way. Well, well, well said. And at the end of the day, we have to have people who have the courage of their convictions to speak the truth and explain what's going on, no matter what uh, they might be from constituents. Uh, we've got to be realistic and we've got to be honest with them about our future. And the sad reality is we're in trouble. Well, we are in trouble in the big picture on this uh, finance front, uh, but there are a lot of things happening on the positive side, common ground-wise, and we like to focus on that. We appreciate you both coming on to talk to us.